Welcome to this week's Today's Health and Wellness Podcast. This is Brett. And I'm Ashley. The Today's Health and Wellness Podcast is a joint effort of the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. In each week's podcast, we spotlight health and wellness stories you'll find in the magazine, on today's health web pages and social media, as well as extras you'll only hear in the weekly podcasts. Thanks for subscribing and hitting the play button. Let's get started. Ashley, today's health and wellness's Mark Noose recently spoke with Brienne McFarlane, Executive Director at Crohn's and Colitis Foundation Central Ohio Chapter, and Jennifer Barron, the Take Steps Walk Coordinator. That's right. The Take Steps Walk is June 24th. Uh, we'll have the details about this walk in the podcast show notes. You can check them out there. He also spoke with this year's Walk Honored Heroes. Let's hear more about the foundation and walk in Mark's interview. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation here in central Ohio, uh, They come on every year to talk about their Take Steps Walk, which is coming up on Saturday, June 24th at Dublin Kaufman Park. And with us is our old friend, well, I'll say longtime friend. (laughs) You're certainly not old, but longtime friend. The executive director, Brianne McFarlane, is here, along with the walk coordinator, Jennifer Barron, as well. Uh, Thank you both for stopping by. Thanks Thanks for having us. Uh, First of all, uh, Brianne, uh, I know you've been with us here, like you say, seven times, seven yeah, years, seven times. talking about uh, many different things. The Take Steps Walk is coming up, and we're going to talk about that. But uh, in general, for those who don't know, tell us what the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation is and what you do. Okay, great. So our mission is to find a cure for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, but it's also su- to support the patients and their families that are suffering from the diseases. Um, so we do a lot of things here. Um, first, we do two large fundraisers. Our biggest is the Take Steps Walk that's coming up in June. Mm-hmm. And then we also do an event called a Chef's Affair, which is a food and wine event. Um, but besides that, we do support groups around the city. Um, all of our education materials are free for patients and professionals. We also do online education programs, so you can learn about IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease, online in your pajamas. <laughs> um, we move in a lot more to that. And, um, you know, we just try to partner pa- patients together who are going through the same thing. So oftentimes we'll have a patient call us and say they're getting ready to start a new med or they're going to have surgery. So we will match them with someone else who's been through that before. Now, I know uh, you're part of a national group, of we course. Are. We are. So we have our national office in New York. Mm-hmm. And then there is a chapter in pretty much every state across the country. And you're responsible for quite a bit of Ohio, right? Yeah. So we have a, about 33 counties around central Ohio. So we, we cover a pretty large area. And I know you work a lot with the medical community. We do. So we have very good partnerships with the um, medical centers here close by, especially those that focus on inflammatory bowel disease. Um, close partnership with Nationwide Children's and with um, OSU Medical Center right now, who just opened a new IBD center recently. Um, we also have uh, Jennifer Barron here, the walk coordinator. And uh, Jennifer, I know, take steps Saturday, June 24th at Dublin Kaufman Park. Uh, tell us about it and how people can get involved. Take Steps is a fantastic event that's family-oriented. It's kid-friendly. We have approximately 3,000 participants that come out and join us to celebrate um, all their hard work. And uh, we have everything that you can imagine at this event. We have live entertainment. We have a large kids area. We have a large food area. We have multiple different um Uh, pharmaceutical vendors on an education row for our patients to take home education materials as well. It is a fantastic um, afternoon and evening. We have the festival first, and then we have the walk that typically kicks off around 6 p.m. To get involved, um, you can actually go to www.cctakesteps.org forward slash Columbus 2017, and you can start a team there or you can make a donation there. You can also give us a call at the office, and we're happy to walk you through those steps and talk to you a little bit more in detail. You know, it's always fun to see all the people uh, get their teams together and they're all wearing the same shirts or carrying balloons or doing something crazy. And uh, it's a great, uh, you know, for people, especially like in offices and things, great team building event. It is. It's a great opportunity. We have several um, corporations in the area as well that start corporate teams and we do internal kickoffs at their offices and kind of get everybody pumped up and ready for the walk. And it's one of my favorite things to see is the entire teams come out, like you said, and everybody's wearing matching shirts. And it's kind of neat to see when everybody kicks off at the walk, all of the rainbow of colors. 
And again, uh, there's no deadline for registration. You can register right up until the event. That's correct. And uh, a lot of fun things going on there as well. I mean, you talk about uh, some of the different events that you have there and the food and everything. We do. The kids' area, there's bounce houses, there's face painting, um, there's multiple different games and local businesses that have booths there that are having kids' activities. We have magicians and, um, oh my gosh, I'm just trying to think. An inflatable colon. We do have a very large (laughs) inflatable colon this year that we're pretty pumped about. (laughs) So it should be pretty fun. I don't know. Where do you get that? (laughs) <laughs> actually i was we were really lucky this year um, um osu uh, medical center actually has one that we oh. were able to rent from them so we're pretty i'm pretty excited about that well, getting the word out that's fantastic and uh, uh talk a little bit about uh once again saturday june 24th dublin kaufman park now there are people who walk and then there, there are people who walk. And I'm one of the just, I just kind of walk. So, I mean, it's for every level of fitness, right? It's for every level of fitness. It is an, a two mile walk that's very casual through the park. Um, it is very low key. So, any type of physical, we have people who come in wheelchairs, we've had crutches, we have people with their dogs, strollers, you name it. And it's just a a nice stroll through the park, essentially. A nice, easy location to get to. Lots of parking. Lots of parking. Um, we have parking over at Dublin Kaufman High School, and we are working on possibly getting an additional lot um, closer as well. So, How And there you- is handicap parking right across from the pavilion as well. Oh, great. How many are you uh, hoping for? Last year, we had approximately 3,000 participants, wow. so we are expecting 3,000 participants, maybe give or take a little. I'm hoping for... A little more, so we'll see. And we'll keep our fingers crossed for great weather, too, for you this year. Yes. Before we talk to our honored heroes this year, uh, Brianne, I know that uh, there was recently a study that came out that uh, had some interesting news about it. Yeah, so we're very excited. We just released some um, our study called Pediatric Risk Study, which actually our local children's hospital, Nationwide Children's, was a part of, and one of their doctors is an author of the study. And basically what they did was they studied children over um, a period of time from diagnosis, from onset of diagnosis. And now from that study, they've been able to tell how severe that those children's um, disease will be. So now what they'll be able to do is when a child is diagnosed, they'll be able to tell the parent whether they're going to have mild, um, moderate, or severe disease, which is really exciting because it will help them make a treatment plan from there that will better suit their needs. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, it was a great study that a lot of local children's hospital or um, children's hospitals were involved in, and so it will make a real difference for these children. Um, you know, in some cases, they won't have to start on some of the heavier meds because they'll, we'll know that they'll have mild to moderate um, disease, whereas those who are going to potentially have more severe disease, they will start um, on a more aggressive therapy to um, get their disease under control. So it's a pretty exciting breakthrough. Uh, I know uh, usually here on the program when we have you on and and we talk about the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, we also just take a minute and talk about some of the basics. So uh, talk a little bit about some of the symptoms that people should look for or, or how people find out that they have one of these diseases. Sure. So it's there's a wide range of symptoms, anywhere from diarrhea to bleeding, severe pain. Um, you know, we have patients who have mild disease who don't have a lot of symptoms, and we have those who have pretty severe diseases. And you'll hear from our honored heroes here in a little bit and learn a little bit about their stories. Um, many of our patients will go on and do just fine. Um, they'll find a treatment plan that'll be okay. And then we'll have the more severe cases where they'll end up having to have surgeries, where they'll um, have to have a portion of their intestine removed. And, and when it gets really severe, oftentimes to the point where they'll have to have a permanent ostomy. Um, it is a lifelong disease. There is no cure at this point, but that's what we're working on. But So that's what we're here for is just to really support those patients and help them find the resources that they need and the right doctor for them. Um, one of the things I didn't mention earlier that we also do is we have our what we call our IBD Help Center. Um, and that is a free number you can call or an email. You can also email them to ask any, basically any question you have about your disease. Um, and it is staffed by medical professionals who have all the answers and can help find the patient's resources. So it's probably one of my favorite things that we, we do to support our patients because it's, you know, we're able to give them a resource to find the information that they need. And your website address again? It's, um, so the, foundation website is mm-hmm. 
Crohn's Colitis Foundation.org. We just uh, rebranded, so we're getting used to that. <laughs> um, and then the walk website is cctakesteps.org forward slash Columbus 2017. We also have, as we mentioned, our honored heroes with us today from the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Uh, Danielle Galden is here and uh, Joe Teeters, and thanks so much uh, for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies first. So, Danielle, first, congratulations <laughs> for being an honored hero. Thank you so much. Uh, tell us your story and how you are, you're involved with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Well, uh, my story began in the end of my high school years where I became extremely ill and didn't really know what was happening. Um, I'd gone to several doctors who um, kind of swept it under the rug and and gave me a wrong diagnosis for several years. So I went to college still being incredibly ill. They thought I had gluten intolerance, just um, irritable bowel syndrome, nothing, you know, that I should be concerned about. So that went on for several, several years, and my disease progressed. Um, I honestly don't know how I made it through college. I don't know how I made it through my wedding day. Um, So finally in uh, 1999 several years after I started becoming ill, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis um, through a colonoscopy. So after that, my life became immeasurably better having a diagnosis and getting the correct treatment. And um, so I was able to handle that for a while until drugs were no longer working and I became progressively more ill and my quality of life really just tanked. So finally in 2007, I elected to have a permanent ileostomy and um, it was the greatest decision I've ever had. So I'm coming up on my 10 year stomaversary, um, which is crazy to think about, but it's magnificent. So, um, you know, it gave me back my life and I still live with ulcerative colitis, but it's just, you know, manageable now. and. And it's a, it's a great life to have. I was given my life back. So, do you also uh, have a drug regimen? I um, not particularly. No, I pretty much all my UC drugs went away when I had my ostomy. There's a couple when I flare up a little bit, I'll get put on a couple things. But in general, no, I'm free of of those medications and free of those. High copays. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and and tell tell me a little bit about how you've been involved with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Well, um, I am both involved with Crohn's and Colitis as well as the United Ostomy Association. Um, when I was ill, and again, this is this is going back. So right when the internet became possible to use, I was often looking things up and. They really were there for me when I needed to find out more information because it's a, it's a subject you don't really talk about. No one wants to talk about poop, you know, let alone diarrhea and bleeding and whatnot. So I want to talk about poop. I know you do, and that's why you're my best friend. <laughs> that's why you're my double bag and a partner. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so I went there for information, and then when I moved to Columbus a few years ago with my family, um, I – Met Joe, which that story will come a little later, but we became very invested in in working with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation to help other people. Kind of my mission in life now. You know, I've been through a lot, and I feel like that's you know there's a reason for that, and I'd like to take that and turn around and help others. So that's what I do. I guess that's why you're (laughs) one of the honored heroes. I think it might be. (laughs) Uh, Joe, uh, tell us your story. Well, my story is very similar to Danielle's, and that's kind of part of uh, our bond over these horrible diseases. Um, I have Crohn's instead of ulcerative colitis, uh, so we represent uh, both sides of the of the spectrum here. I was I had problems. I had poop problems in high school, so similar to Danielle, I just um, never really my problems never really rose to the point needing medical attention. Um, I joined the Naval Reserves out of high school, and I went away to basic training and was gone for a while, and that's when things really started to kick in. And so I I came home and started going around to doctors, and I got diagnosed a little quicker uh, than Danielle through a colonoscopy as well and uh, started on all of the the medications that you do when you're diagnosed with IBD. It was on high doses of prednisone, which is a a, a very magical drug, but it's also very... uh, toxic and not good to, to live on. I've uh, been through the regimen when the biologics hit the market. I started on, on Remicade and Humira and Simzia and uh, all the other sulfa drugs, everything. Uh, 
the progression of my disease. I've had uh, several surgeries. I had two resections along the way and had big portions, large portions of my small and large intestine removed. And finally, in 2012, I had to make the decision like Danielle did and became a, a permanent ileostomate, and, uh, which led me on the path to becoming part of Double Bagging It. So, mm-hmm. As far as that goes, after the surgery, has your quality of life improved? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, each surgery along the way, um, which is the interesting thing with the treatment of the Crohn's disease, each each resection that I had done, they took out the diseased portions. And for a period of time, I felt normal and healthy because the disease was, quote unquote, gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but then obviously with the ostomy, uh, the again, the disease portion is removed and the life is immeasurably better not having to worry about rushing to a bathroom. Where is a bathroom? Where can I go? So that mm-hmm. definitely relieves a lot of the psychological part of it, There, which is kind of weird to say because there is a psychological component to get over when you become an ostomate and just mm-hmm. lifestyle change, body change. But then once you adapt, it is it is very freeing and, and gives, you, uh, gives you your life back. So as an honored hero, uh, what do you hope to accomplish? I hope, and I think we hope. We do. <laughs> uh, we hope as Double Bagging It. Double Bagging It is our team, and it's it's our team not only for the walk, but it's our team in general uh, to spread awareness for IBD as well as ostomies and the ostomate life, and that life, you know, ostomy life is life. Um, so we our our hope is to use this platform to reach more people. And with our experience, share our experience, and give other people along the similar journey hope that that you can live with these diseases. We will find a cure eventually, thanks to Brianne and Jennifer and other people like them. So, so I imagine we're going to see you both at the walk, right? Oh, you will. And some ama- amazing, magnificent T-shirts. Oh, yeah? Tell me about them. Uh, my daughter, she's 13. Last year, she drew... Um, She's a very creative little child and young lady, I should say. And so in her fun, she often just drew pictures of us, which we finally said, hey, can you draw one for our logo? And so she drew an amazing caricature of the two of us, and they're displayed very prominently on the back in our character form, um, and it's amazing. So, yeah, we, we use that logo often, but they're great fun. And who else, I mean, who doesn't want to? Go talk to people that has a shirt that says "Team Double Bagging It." That's just, that's just you know that's just fun. That's just good times. And uh, back with us again on the program, Brianne McFarland, the executive director, and Jennifer Barron, the uh, walk coordinator. Uh, Brianne, uh, those stories. Um, is it common for people to be misdiagnosed? Uh, it happens. Yes, um, I think a little bit less now than it used to be ten mm-hmm. to twenty years ago. Um, you know. It used to be misdiagnosis, anxiety, or just stomach problems. Um, you know, we have a lot of patients that have lived with the disease for a long time that we've heard that from. Um, you know, I think the message with any disease or any time that you're not feeling well, it's being an advocate for yourself and pushing for, you know, getting the right diagnosis and the right information that you need. Um, but you definitely have to go through the process of the colonoscopy, which um, both of our honored heroes mentioned today was really what they found or how they found out what their disease was because they need to be able to go in and see that inflammation. So, um, you know, just being a self-advocate and pushing for the information is, is the best message. And again, you working closely with the medical community probably helps in all this as well. It does. Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, what helps with that is us both keeping each other up to date on what's going on and what's new in the treatment process. You know, our organization works very closely with researchers and and actually just in the last year or so opened up what is um, called Plexus, which is a great place for all the research to kind of be held in one place. It's called IBD Plexus. And so that's another breakthrough for us that we're pretty excited about. So the researchers won't have to reinvent the wheel anymore. They can all kind of take a look at each other's research. Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, uh, their big Take Steps walk is coming up, and uh, Jennifer Barron is the walk coordinator. Jennifer, wrap it up and tell us again when, where, and how people can get involved. Take Steps will be on June 24th at Dublin Kaufman Park. The festival starts and kicks off around 4.30 p.m. Come join us for a great afternoon with tons of kids' activities, food, entertainment, and so much more. For more information, you can 
Go to www.cctakesteps.org forward slash Columbus 2017, or you can also reach out to us at the Central Ohio Chapter Office at 614-889-6060. You've been listening to Columbus Concerns, a public affairs presentation of North American Broadcasting. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop us a line in care of this radio station, 1458 Dublin Road, Columbus, 43215. Thanks again for listening to this week's Today's Health and Wellness podcast, brought to you by Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. If you have a health and wellness segment you would like us to cover, send us an email. Our contact information is in the show notes. And if you'd like more information about sponsoring our podcast, like Ashley just mentioned, our contact information is in the podcast notes. We look forward to hearing from you. Circle 270 Media Podcast Network.